Apologetics seeks to give credible answers to curious questions. Did God really hate Esau? The phrase, Jacob I loved and Esau I have hated, can be seen in different places throughout scripture. In the book of Genesis, in the book of Romans, in the book of Malachi, we see that phrase, Jacob I loved, Esau I hated. So some have said, man, I really struggle. I, I, I really struggle with the Bible altogether. I mean, how in the world could God hate Esau? And others have said, well, you know, I don't have a problem understanding that. My real problem is understanding how God could love Jacob. And it's interesting how perspective plays into it. Jacob was somebody who wrestled with God. Esau was Mr. Apathy. Esau sold his birthright. He wasn't uh, concerned about God. He wasn't passionate about God. So how are we to understand God hating Esau and loving Jacob? Well, from the standpoint that God had a covenant love for Jacob and a non-covenant love for Esau. Esau still experienced some protection, even though he became the father of the Edomites, yet there would be consequences for his rejection and rebellion against God. He wasn't interested in God. He wasn't interested in pleasing God. And so you could think of it like, you know, he loved Jacob less or Esau less and Jacob more. Let me give you another example of how this works. I mean, first of all, we're commanded to love people. We're commanded to love our neighbor. So, uh, and we love people with God's love. So how could the people in Esau's time have loved Esau with God's love if God hated Esau? So we love people with God's love who loves all people, but not everybody is loved with the covenant love. Not everybody is in a saving relationship. Jesus said, if anybody would come after me, he must hate his mother and his brothers. Well, is he saying that we must really hate them? Of course not. We're to obey our mother and father. We're to honor them. We're to love our neighbor. So what's he saying? That your love for me should be so strong that your love for others in comparison looks like hate. Now, obviously not really looks like hate. We can't be so wooden there. And in the same way, in this context, we need to realize that God is saying, I have a covenant love and Jacob is going to be under my blessings. Well, Esau rejects my blessings and he's going to experience my curse and it will look like hate. But what if I point out to you folks that there is a verse in the Bible which says something very similar. It says God hates evildoers. And that is found in Psalms chapter 5, verses number 6 and 7. In fact, uh, Dr. Craig pointed out that there are a series of statements in the Quran saying that God does not love this or that person. <laughs> But I noticed in the Rogets Thesaurus of the Bible, a very useful reference tool for the Bible, by the way, that in fact there are several statements in the Bible as well indicating that God does not love this or that. For example, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 8, there is a time to hate. But more to the point, Leviticus chapter 20 verse 23 because of these customs, God abhorred them. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 12. Whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 30. I will loathe, I will loathe you. Psalms 11, 5. This is another Psalm again. The Lord hates him that does that the Lord hates him that loves violence. And we can go on and on. But now when we look at these passages in the, in the Bible, we see that in fact the Bible maintained the similar Muslim position regarding God and how he treats evildoers. The idea that God is love, or that statement itself that God is love, is in 1 John. That's one of the letters of John that was disputed in the Christian church until it was finally accepted. Notice that it comes towards the end of the Bible, and I would see that emphasis in this letter of John as a later emphasis that came out of the understanding of Jesus' pathos, of his passion, of what he bore in suffering, and that was interpreted as a suffering out of the love for humankind. I'm not denying that God is love, but I'm saying that that later emphasis is a later emphasis. But when we go back to what the Bible itself says, we see that the Bible maintains a similar Quranic stance. 
Dr. Craig says this is only in the poetic books, like in the Psalms, for example. But notice I did not only quote from the poetic books, like the Psalms. I quoted from Leviticus, which is uh, a law book. I quoted from Deuteronomy, another law book, Deuteronomy again, Zechariah, Revelation, Malachi, and Romans. In Romans, in the New Testament, Paul maintains that God loved Jacob, but he hated Esau. God hated Esau, according to the Bible. So I think it would be unbiblical to try and maintain, for the purpose of uh, this dialogue, that God does not hate evil the worst. The Old Testament did not say that God is love. Uh, the New Testament says, but in the later writing, towards the end of the first century, that means for many decades, Christians did not have a piece of writing in which they can say, look, it says that God is love. So what was he before that? Uh, how would the Jews answer this? question to say that God is love. Our Christian friends say that because God is love, he must be a trinity so that there's love between the three persons. But then the love is still internal within the trinity. It's just some part of God loving some other part of God. It's just like a person having a dual personality and saying, I love my other person. So there is an internal love maybe, but it still does not extend to anyone else. So I do not believe that, that uh, the Trinity answers this question. Yes, it sounds nice as, a, as an argument. It's less an emotional one. Uh, everybody likes love, and we like unconditional love. So it feels good to hear about that love. But the Old Testament also says that God hates, and he hates certain people. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, for example, uh, so, and, and, and in the Psalms. Uh, so when God hates people, how do you reconcile that with love? Well, obviously, that's a different question.